Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. We are making some progress in here. I spent most of the day cleaning up. Now granted, there is clutter everywhere, but in an unusual turn of events, I can kind of walk around without killing myself. We've got the wheelbase kind of right. Motor's supposed to be sort of where it is. We gotta get back to the body and making sure it's all in the right place so we can put the fenders on and doors and, and all, all that stuff. It's a big deal. But, as you guys may notice, there's a lot to, there's a, there's a lot not holding it together. A lot not holding it together. That's right. So today, we're gonna work on the firewall. And it's not just putting the firewall in, we're gonna reverse the firewall. So let's get after it. All right, gang. So not only we spent an absurdly large amount of spare time, spare time, kind of getting it as far as it's gotten, we've spent a ton of spare money getting it here too. It's kind of like purgatory. You know, it's a little bit like uh, the guy that pushes up the rock up the hill, Sisyphus. Right now the cowl has no structure. That's not what it's supposed to do. That is because we removed this fireball, right? We did that so that we could slide the cowl over the motor the way that we needed to. After all, we we're putting a much longer and wider motor in where there used to be a much shorter and narrower motor. We have a small block Chevrolet V8 where the flat four used to be. Just in case you're brand new here. Hi, Brian, welcome to Between the Sharks. 1927 Ford Touring body on a 1928 through 31 Model A frame stock wheelbase. That means we don't have enough room here. So we are going to employ one of the oldest tricks in the hot rod book, nothing new here. We're going to reverse the firewall. It goes in like so, but, but it won't fit that way. But if we reverse it by spinning it around, we get this recess working to our advantage. Now granted, that does mean that this part is now taking up space for, well, you and me sitting in the car, but leaving room Clearly, for our most favorite passenger, the big engine. Now in the Ford family of hot rods, uh, this is a more popular trick on the Model A. The reason I think it's less popular on the Model T is if you look at the profile of this, where, you know, this is the front, it sticks out and then ducks back in, which means if you reverse it, it goes in and then comes back out. So you're sort of like swapping problems here, but we'll figure out how we're gonna solve that later. The Model A firewall is a little bit more conducive to just flipping around. You get a couple of extra inches uh, and the band goes back in the cowl where it came out of. Once you get past the Model A into the Model B or 32s or and up, the wheelbase has gotten longer and longer. See, the 32 came with the first flathead V8. So there is a little bit more room to work with. And it doesn't matter much for our case because we are we don't have a 32 frame, we have a Model A frame. And we need every single inch we can get. When you're approaching this kind of a situation, especially on a Model T, it's good to take a look at both sides, right? This is gonna be our new engine facing side. And you can see, well, it makes sense to cut kind of right here and then around the flat spot and all that. But if you look here from the other side, you go, well, maybe I wanna keep that sexy curve, maybe I wanna do whatever. So just, you know, Look at both sides, decide what you want to do. For our case, the most important reason I'm doing this right now is to get this structure back in the car. So I'm gonna cut all this out. I'll show you the line when I mark it. We may or may not flip that back around so that this ducks in even further, right? Because right now it's sticking out. So if I cut it all out and then flip it around, it'll actually come back out this side. Things won't line up that perfectly. It's not as simple as just flipping it around and welding it back in because we've got a lot of interesting curves here. But, but, there's more to the story. This particular scrap heap was drastically customized by a falling tree at some point in its life. So if you look down along the cowl, right, you get this nice straight edge here, and then you can actually see this curve. That is not natural. That is actually a result of metal stretching so significantly that it is curved. All of this has been replaced in trying to deal with this. Here's the stock firewall in the same orientation. This is like relatively straight and flat. And suddenly here, you can start to see this curve. 
when we reverse the firewall, the curves are now going to be on opposite sides. The, the stock unbent side of the firewall is going to be over here, and the modified by tree side of the firewall will be over here where the cowl has not been modified by said tree. In theory, if we can force the cowl to fit the firewall on the tree damage side and the firewall to fit the cowl on the not tree damage side, we are going to be closer to stock Model T, which is kind of the world we want to be in. Considering I like to keep a spare one of these handy, you can see on this Model T Roadster that our straight line is the right line. So what that means is our janky cowl will not fit any other firewall and our firewall will not fit any decent cowl. So I have no qualms about mashing these things together and trying to make it work. I just don't know how well it's going to work. All right, all right, all right. Before we get to cutting, for those of you not totally following along because you have to use your imagination to complete this motor, if you don't know what that looks like, I understand, let me help you out. So our last carburetor is right here, sort of in line with our cowl. So in theory, if this is all we needed to worry about, our firewall would actually, at least the top part would fit. But let's not forget gang, we have a distributor that's gonna come out right here, it comes out of this hole to about this tall-ish, this many big around. So in order for that thing to come out, I don't want just a little notch that's distributor shaped. I need to be able to take that sucker out. Things go wrong with these things. So you need to be able to fix them and preferably on the side of the road without pulling the engine out to change the distributor. The goal is to flip the firewall around and use, call that enough space to do what we need to do. I'm gonna make believe that that is the case. In an attempt to keep from confusing myself, I'm gonna eyeball the marks on the side that will face the engine, but I'm going to mark it on the opposite side. And I know that sounds confusing already, but what I mean is, it's easy to look at it this way, and I want to cut off anything that's protruding back towards the camera at this point. So, but I also want to keep the full structure. So I think we'll be cutting right along this line, all the way up till it gets flat. We'll cut straight across, and then back down this line again. We're gonna mark it on the other side. Oh dear. Because that's gonna be easier to run our cutting tools, just right along the line straight across, over, and down. All right, because I just got that brand new Best Arc Plasma Cutter, that's gonna be our tool of choice. Now granted, you don't have one, get a jigsaw with a metal blade, or just a grinder wheel, or a sawzall, or one of the other thousands of tools. This is just too thick for like a snipper kind of little guy. Uh, I don't feel like doing this with a grinder, and I have this new tool, so I wanna try it out. This part I'm going to have to freehand just because of the way this little standoff works. I'll be able to do the straight edge up here. I'm sure this will be a wiggly line when I'm done. But we can straighten that out with a ziz wheel. All right, the machine's on. It's dialed into where I think I want it. I'm going to try to do the first cut without the compressor on. Should have plenty of air. One tip for cutting with anything like an X-Acto blade or really anything. Sometimes, if you have the option, it's best to cut in a straight line to or from you. Now, granted... It's good to be off to one side, let's say if you're dragging a blade towards you, don't drag it directly into your guts. That's a good way to end up with an X-Acto blade in your guts and uh, spend your afternoon in the hospital. But what I mean is, you know, if you drag off to one side, that's your best bet because, I mean, just think about it, right? That's a straight line. As soon as I try to go across my body, I'm inherently making an arc. Like there's a lot more mechanism to make this straight as opposed to this because your arm is attached to you here so Well, that's a hell of a thing. Very curious how different these shapes are, you know, the cowl and uh, the firewall once you put them around. All right, fine. 
line, 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 line. Everything I did before I realized I was gonna have to do this is in the way. So let's get to hacking some stuff up that I super booger welded in and it's gonna be no fun to remove. So I found that the other day, the original sub rail bolted to a piece of galvanized. Why am I bringing that up now? Well, because I've got to trim the nubs of the sub rails that I built to replace that trash. Those were ultimately a guess anyway, but I did build them right to the back of the firewall. And now that we're recessing the firewall, I got to take about an inch off both sides, which is inconvenient. All right, round two, gang. Shorten the sub rails. Need a plan, a better plan. This should not be a normal situation for any of you people unless your Model T also got smashed by a tree. Wowzers. I mean, it's just metal, which means we can beat the snot out of it, but done that a lot and apparently not to great results. Well, it's a whole mess of clamps. Kind of interesting stuff. Uh, exactly what we expected over here, at least what I expected, that we were gonna have some kind of weird gap. But at this point, I feel pretty comfortable pie cutting that, sort of bending it to be where it wants to be. And then this other side, we still have this metal to fill in. I snapped off this little piece because it was curved way, way out from being bent by that tree. So it's super stretched. So we'll fill this in, but I mean, outside of needing a mountain of work, we're in the ballpark for a much better starting place. Our distributor goes right here. So that may still be a little bit tight. Recessing the center of this a little more is not what I want to do, but it's totally doable. Clearly, I can get the distributor kind of lined up enough to put it in there. But now that we have the firewall in, like it's, it's a firewall in a place, right? It's all clamped together. Until we bolt the intake down and drop the distributor in, I don't really know how close we are. I know we're really, 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 really close. But, 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 we've got a wheelbase dialed in. We've got our big fancy new wheels on it. And remember, this car is cobbled up. It had been broken in half. Um, the sub rails were different lengths. They've been patched together, I think, from two different cars with a piece of bent galvanized tubing. So what I'm getting at is I think it might be time to drag the fenders back in here, put the fenders on, start to get the body situated over the wheelbase in exactly the right place. Start checking the dimensions one final time. Make sure we're good from, you know, here to the back of the door, door, panel, door, cowl. Make sure the sides are even, all of that stuff to make sure that the firewall is landing at exactly the right place so that we can modify it as necessary to fit the distributor. Remember here, gang, we are burning the candle at both ends. Stock Model A wheelbase, so we did our very best to put the rear end and the front end in the right place to accommodate that 103 and a half inch dimension. Now we've got to get the Model T body exactly right on that wheelbase. So I've done a bunch of homework, I've done a bunch of practical work and application to getting the body lined up there but now it's time to finally confirm every bit of that, build more body mounts than we have, because I think I only have two on right now, just barely holding it in place, and fit the fenders. When I said we're burning the candle at both ends, it means we're burning it, we're going from the back to the front and the front to the back. So wheelbase has to start here on the body. Basically, I cannot change where this wheel well is on the body, so it needs to line up with this big, handsome white wall wheel, Otherwise, everything's gonna look funny for eternity. From the front, we put our radiator in and we worked backwards with the engine 
And wherever it meets the body is wherever it meets the body. We need to confirm that the body is in exactly the right place, and then we'll modify, well, all that area to fit everything else that needs to fit. The other reason that's all a big deal is this whole area in here has a ton of stuff, meaning all your driver controls. We need to fit three pedals, a floor, a steering column, somehow shoehorn a master cylinder, a shifter, seat, gauges. There's a lot of stuff going on right here, and all of that is going to be critically measured and placed based on where the body is on the frame. So we got to make sure it's absolutely 100% right. I'm excited to see this thing with fenders and white walls. Well, so there you have it. The firewall's kind of in, which is something it could not be had we not cut it and flipped it around. Now, if you're doing this on your project Model T, hopefully you're starting with a cowl that's not quite so smashed, but if you're starting with one, I mean, come on, they're 100 years old. They're getting harder and harder to find. So A, you gotta work with what you got, and B, you know, save every one of them you can out there. Like everyone, even if it's not perfect, this thing is gonna go down the road and still be one of them. One more that's not a parts car. It's gonna be a car car. This does buy you, you know, two, three inches, something like that, which is a big deal on these little bitty cars. Clearly you're giving it up from the inside of the car where you go. We'll see you next time on Between the Sharks. If you made it this far, high five that subscribe button. It's about to get super, super cool.